Merry Christmas, church. How's everybody feeling in the house today? Look, I've got a lot of energy, and so here's what I'm going to need from you guys. I'm going to want to see a lot of energy from y'all as well. So I'm going to try this one more time. Merry Christmas, Thrive Church. It is so good to see all of you guys. Welcome to church today. Happy Christmas Eve. So wonderful to see all of y'all. Is anybody else excited that tomorrow is Christmas Day? Anybody? Am I the only one? What about the kids in the house today? Are some of the kids in the house today? Are y'all excited that Christmas is tomorrow? Man, I love, love Christmas. And there are so many reasons that I love Christmas. But one of the reasons that I love Christmas so much is because we come together as a family. And I love that when this church comes together as a family and we get to celebrate the birth of Jesus Christ together. It is one of my favorite, favorite times of the year. And so today, here's what I want to do to get things started. I want a little bit more crowd participation from you guys today. I'm going to say a couple of words and then I want you to repeat those words after me. Can we do that, guys? Pretty simple. All right. All right. All right. So I'm going to say the words you repeat after me. Say it. God is. God was. And God will be with us. That's beautiful, church. Let's let's do that again. God is. God was. And God will be with us. Amen. Today, I want to speak to you guys for a few minutes on the subject of God is. God was. And God will be with us. Well, I want to begin by asking the question, have you ever been in a situation before where you needed God to show up in a big way? Anybody ever been in a situation like that before? A few years ago, Sarah and I were visiting my mom in Blanco, Texas. How many of y'all have ever been to Blanco, Texas? If you know anything about Blanco, Texas, Blanco, Texas, it's country in Blanco, y'all. I mean, country. You got country people, you got country roads. I mean, it is country in Blanco, Texas. And so we're out in Blanco, Texas, and we decide to go for a run. And so that's exactly what we do. We go for a run. We're on the country roads. I mean, there's not a single car in sight. There's not a single human in sight. We're in the middle of nowhere. And man, it's beautiful. Things are going great. We're jogging along. The sun is rising. The birds are chirping. Man, it's an amazing time. We're out there on a run. Things are going great. And then suddenly off in the distance, I see two large dogs running towards us. And so at first I'm thinking to myself, oh, no big deal. Not, you know, I'm running. I'm fast. You know, I think I can get away from them. So I, we don't worry about it. But then they get closer and closer. And I'm like, oh, my goodness, we're in the middle of nowhere. If these dogs attack us, I don't know what we're going to. No one's going to hear us scream. You know, I don't know what we are going to do. And so we kept on running. Next thing I know, those pit bulls are about 10 feet away from us. They were not slowing down. I think they were actually about to attack us. We needed God to show up in a big way. Now, you are not going to believe what I'm about to tell you. Out of nowhere, the Blanco Police Department rolls up. I mean, out of nowhere, one of the guys jumps out of the car and he maces both of the pit bulls right there on the spot. I am not lying. Can you believe that? God showed up in a big, big way. Even to this day, I think that was an angel. I think that that police officer was one of God's angels sent there to protect us from getting bit by those pit bulls that day. But man, have you ever been in a situation where you needed God to show up? In a big, big way. Now, chances are you're probably not ever going to get chased down by pit bulls, or at least I hope you are never chased down by by pit bulls. But chances are, if you're here today, at some point or another in your life, you are going to face a situation where you need God to show up in a big way. Whether it's a tragedy or bad news or a struggle with a friend or a parent or a family member, or it could be a health issue, something like that. You need God to show up in a big way. And the good news of Christmas is that God has come into the world, that Jesus did show up in a big, big way. In fact, the scriptures say that a light has been born into the darkness. And one of the main reasons that we celebrate Christmas and one of the main reasons that I get so excited is because light has come into the darkness. God has showed up in a big, big way. Can I get an amen, somebody? That's right. Now, how many of y'all know that Jesus has a lot of different names in the Bible? Did y'all know that? There's a lot of different names for Jesus, aren't there? What are some of the names that the Bible gives for Jesus? Just call them out. 
Savior, Yahweh, that's right, the light of the world, right? Yeah, that's right, He is the, the Messiah, the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, Emmanuel, Prince of Peace, Almighty God. The light of the world, the way, the truth, and the light, the Alpha and the Omega. So many different names for the name of God. But do you know what my favorite name is for Jesus out of all of them? Emmanuel. Brandon knows the answer because he's heard my sermon. (laughs) Emmanuel, which means God with us. God with us. And friends, there really is no greater news in all of the world than the fact that God is, God was, and God will be with us. And that's the main reason that we celebrate Christmas is because God has come into this world. He desires to have a relationship with you and with me. And that is the good news of Christmas. Matthew chapter 1, verses 20 through 23, it says, An angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream. And the angel said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife, because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. This took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet. The virgin will give birth to a child and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. John says it this way in John 1, 1, he says, in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. And he became flesh and made his dwelling among us. In other words, God is, God was, and God always will be with us. And that's why we celebrate Christmas. Now, I want to pause for a second and I want to speak to two different groups of people who might be here today. One group of people, you're here today and you say, you know what? I hear you talking about Jesus. I hear you saying that God is, God was, and God will be with me. But I've got my doubts. I've got my doubts. And so you're here today on this Christmas Eve and you're doubting whether or not Jesus really was who he said he was. And if you're here today and you're with, you're here with your doubts, let me just say, I am so glad you're here. And this is a place, this is a church where you are free to be, where you are welcome to have your doubts. I am so glad that you're in church today. Or maybe you're here today and you've been a follower of Jesus for quite some time. You've been a follower of Jesus for many years, in fact, but you're having a hard time believing that God is really with you. And the reason that you're having a hard time believing that God is with you is because your situation is not good. You're going through a difficult season. I mean, 2020, come on, somebody, right? It's been a rough year. And so we look around and we see it, all the negative things that are going on in our life. And maybe you're here today and because of your struggle, because of your storm, because of your difficult season, because of that conflict with that person in your family, you're wondering, you've got your doubts. Is God really with me? And my hope and my goal today would be that every single person listening to this message, whether you're tuning in online or whether you're here in person tonight, Today, that you would walk out of here and that you would understand and grab a hold of this powerful, important truth that God is, God was, and God always will be with you. So with the rest of my time today, I want to break down all three aspects of that little statement one by one, and then I'll get out of y'all's way. Does that sound good, church? All right, that's what I'm going to do then. So point number one, God is, can we repeat it again? God is is. with us. us. That is exactly right. God is with us. Luke chapter one, verse 28 says, then the angel came to her and said, greetings, you who are highly favored. The Lord is with you. you." That's right. He is Emmanuel. Now, some of us are here today and you're hurting. I just know. I know there are some of us who are here today going through a difficult time. You're hurting. You're going through a bad season. And what you need to know, what God sent me to say to you today is that God is with you. He is with you. In fact, in the midst of our pain, sometimes that's when God shows up in the biggest way. How many of y'all know that? 
That sometimes it's when we're hurting. Sometimes it's when our, we're in our place of broken heartedness that God shows up in the most powerful ways. In fact, the scripture even says in Psalm 34, verse 18, that the Lord is near to the broken hearted. The Lord is near to the broken hearted. And so if you're here today, you got a broken heart. Let me encourage you. You might be closer to God than anybody else. Because the scripture says that the Lord is near to those who are broken hearted. And when you embrace this reality that God is with you, it is a complete and total game changer. It will change the way you live your life. But how many of y'all know sometimes it's hard to tell that God is with us when we're going through pain? Am I right? Well, we're going through a difficult season. We're, we're going through 2020 and we had a plan for our life and we had a plan for 2020 that was supposed to be amazing. Like we had it all mapped out, all planned out, but everything went sideways, right? It's hard in those times to know that God is with you. In fact, it's a little like this meme I'm going to throw up here on the screen today. How many of y'all have ever seen that? I think that's a good way to kind of describe like this last year, right? It's like sometimes God, he has a plan for your life. He has a purpose for your life. He's got a calling for you in your life. And it doesn't always look the way we imagine it looking. And in fact, sometimes it's just downright terrifying what we're going through, right? But all the while, God is right there beside us, carrying us through. And it might feel like you are plunging to your death. But let me encourage you. God is with you. Is that good news to anybody in the house today? I hope so. That God is with you. Let me break it down like this. When you are lost and you don't know where to go, God is with you as your guide. When you are broken and you don't know where you can find healing, God is with you as your healer. When you are confused and you don't know where to go, God is with you as your wisdom and guide. When you are sick and you have very little hope, God is with you as your healer. And when you are feeling overwhelmed and crushed by the pain of shame and guilt from past mistakes that you've made in your life. God is with you as your Savior. I wish that somebody in the house today could get excited and shout an amen for the fact that our God is with us. Amen. He's with us. I love y'all's energy today. So that's point number one. God is with us. Point number two. God was. Can we say it again, church? God was with you. God was with you. You Now, I don't know about you guys, but for me, it's easy when I look back through the rear view mirror of my life. Sometimes it's a little easier to see God in the rear view mirror than it is to see him in the midst of my pain, my struggle, that difficult season. It's often much easier to see God when we look back to see that God was with us. I think of Joseph in the Old Testament. When we first meet Joseph in the Old Testament, he's just a little boy with big dreams. And God gives him a dream and puts a calling on his life. And he says, Joseph, I'm going to use you. You're going to be a great leader. In fact, you're going to bring salvation to your entire family. And so Joseph gets this big dream and this big vision. And he shares this vision of him being the leader of many people with his brothers. And guess what? They didn't catch that vision. They didn't like that vision. In fact, so much that they're like, we're going to kill Joseph. All right. He thinks he's so amazing. He thinks he's so awesome. We're going to kill him. But he's our brother, so we can't kill him. So I guess we'll just sell him into slavery. I guess that's the better option. So that's what they do. They sell Joseph into slavery. Now, imagine Joseph getting this calling from God, having this big dream, this this big vision of what God is calling him into. And now he's sold into slavery. And to make matters worse, Joseph actually ends up in an Egyptian prison. Now imagine getting a calling from God, knowing that God had put an anointing on your life, he, that he had a great purpose for you, a great mission for you in your life. And here you are sitting in prison years and years later. Do you think at this point in the story, Joseph might have questioned a little bit, is God really with me? Is God really with me? But how many of y'all know that when we look at the story of Joseph as a whole, we see that actually it was his time in the prison that was preparing him for the next step, which would elevate him to the palace, which would ultimately elevate him to the place of being an authority, second in command in all of Egypt, to where he would provide salvation for his entire family. And you wonder, where was God in the midst of all of Joseph's pain? The scripture says in Genesis 39, verse 21, 
It says, but the Lord was with Joseph, Emmanuel. He was with Joseph and showed him mercy. He gave him favor in the sight of the keeper of the prison. God was with him the entire way, even through the struggles, even through the difficult seasons, even through the hardships. And I came to tell somebody here today that is going through a difficult season. You're going through hardships. Don't give up hope. God is with you. And sometimes it's even the times in the prison. Sometimes it's even the times in the pit that God is using to one day elevate you to the palace so you can step into the calling that God has placed on your life. You see, he uses hardships and difficulties oftentimes to strengthen us and to build endurance in us so that we are ready for the ultimate calling that he's placed on my life, on our lives. And I don't know about you, but I get emotional when I start thinking about all of the amazing ways that God was with me in my life. And when I look back on my history and I look back on my past and I can't help but see the fingerprints of God and the ways that he showed up in miraculous ways, even though I didn't see him at the moment. I remember when Sarah and I first got married, you know, we were we were really, really young. We had a whole lot of love, but we didn't have much else. OK, like we were pretty broke, like really broke. And when I say broke, I mean broke, like we could barely afford to pay attention, broke. That, that's how broke we were broke. All right. And I remember we had we had our first son. We had Brayden and we were we were still really, really young. Sarah was still in college. She was working full time. I was working at the church. I think I was making about four hundred dollars a month, you know, big time cash rolling in. You know, it was awesome. And uh, one day we get the news that Sarah had been laid off. She had been laid off. And so there we were losing that entire stream of income. We didn't know what we were going to do. And so we prayed and we pressed into God and we asked God, God, we know that you're our provider. We know that you care for us. We know that you've called us to what we are doing right now. Lord, we pray that you would show up in a big way. And I kid you not, two days later, my pastor called me into his office and he says, Scott, I don't know why we're doing this, but we're going to triple your income. Let me tell you that income, it was more than enough to pay for everything that we needed. And it, it got us through all the struggles that, that we faced. And it was an incredible miracle that God did. So it was awesome. God was with us financially. I remember six years ago when we moved here to start this church. I mean, we didn't really have much. We emptied out the entire bank account just to have our first service. We rolled into our first service and the, the, we were completely on zero with the church bank account. We didn't know what was going to happen. If people didn't show up, we were going to look ridiculous. OK, we'd only lived here for about nine months. We didn't really know anybody, but we knew that God had called us to plant this church. And so that's exactly what we did. And we showed up that Easter Sunday. And you would not believe 132 people showed up and we took an offering and we collected more than enough to allow the church to continue forward. God provided for this church so that we could continue in our mission of preaching the gospel here in Austin, Texas. God was with us. God was with me through so many difficult seasons in my life. I remember the day that my mom called me and she told me that my sister had overdosed. God was with me that day in my pain and my brokenheartedness. And God was with me when I heard that my sister had died tragically. And God was with me that day when I stood up on the stage and I preached at her funeral, preaching a message of hope and redemption. And God was with me on my last Christless Christmas over 18 years ago when I embarked on a meth bender for three days. That would be the last time I ever picked up a drink or a drug in my life. And God was with me. When I made the decision to move to Houston, Texas, and I got treatment and for my for my drug addiction and God was with me when I kneeled down on my knees on that job site and I embraced Jesus into my heart and I came up off the ground, a changed, transformed person. And God was with me that night when I raised my hand and I said, Jesus, come into my life. Come fill me with your presence. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. God was with me. And if God was with me, then I know he's with me now and he's with you as well. God is and God was with us. My third and final point today, that is that God will be with you. God will be with you. You know, no matter what you go through, 
God will be with you. No matter what struggles, no matter what storms you face in this life, God ultimately will be with you. And when we look at the Christmas story, I think about Mary. Mary, wow, what a big calling was on her life to give birth to the Son of God. I mean, incredible calling. Imagine the faith it must have taken for Mary to actually live out this calling. And I can't help but wonder what it must have been like when that angel spoke to Mary, just to imagine if she could have seen the the future and knowing that God would be with her. What would she have been thinking? I think she would have thought God will be with me. God will be with me when I give birth to this son. And God will be with me when I see him transform water into wine. And God will be with me when I watch my son multiply the bread and the fish. And God will be with me when he is ultimately betrayed by his best friends. And God will be with me when he carries that cross up Calvary. And God will be with me when I see them nail the stakes into his innocent hands. And God will be with me on that day when the skies grow dark. And God will be with me when the earth begins to shake. And God will be with me when the temple veil is torn. And God will be with me on that first night when I watch and I wait. And God will be with me on the second night as I watch and as I wait. And God will be with me on the third day when we go to the tomb where his body was laid and the stone is rolled away. Why? Because he is not there. He is resurrected from the grave. Friends, I want somebody to get excited today that our God is, our God was, and our God will be with us forever. Paul sums it up this way in Romans chapter 8 when he says, What could ever stand against us? Who shall ever separate us from the love of God that is in Christ? Shall trouble or hardship or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword or the coronavirus? I'll add that. No, none of these things. In all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life Neither angels nor demons, neither powers or principalities, the present or the future, height, depth, anything else in all of creation could ever separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus. Friends, I came to share this message of hope with you today that there is nothing in all of creation that can ever separate us from the love of God. He is Emmanuel, God with us. God was, God is, and God will be with us. Jesus sums it up this way in Revelation chapter one, verse eight, when he says, I am the alpha and the omega, the one who is, who was, and who is to come. This is the great news of Christmas, that the God of the universe in all of his love, in all of his mercy and goodness, he is with you, with me, with all of us forever. That's great news. Let's pray. Holy Spirit, I thank you that you are in this place today. God, thank you that over 2,000 years ago, you came as a light into a dark, dark world. And God, since that day, The world has not been the same. And Lord, we know that you are, you were, and you will be with us. Through every difficult season, through every dark struggle, you are with us. But the question that many of us need to contemplate today is, are we with you? We know that you are a God with us. But for many of us today, the question is, are we with you? Have we said yes to the radical gift of your grace? Have we said yes to the radical mercy that was poured out for us on the cross? Have we said yes 
to the life-giving relationship that only Jesus can offer. And for some of us who are here tonight, today at noon, not tonight, for the very first time, we're saying yes to that. And so if you're here today, and for the first time in your life, you want to say yes to the radical, forgiving mercy of God, I just invite you to pray this prayer after me. Jesus, thank you so much that you came into a dark world as a light. Thank you that you died on the cross for my sin. Thank you that you forgive me of all of my mistakes that I have made. Father, I pray that you would come, live in my heart, lead me in my life. If you prayed that prayer today, maybe for the first time, just as a step, saying yes to Jesus, I would love to visit with you after service because that is a huge step. And I would say, what better day than Christmas Eve 2020 than to get right with God? So we're going to sing this final song tonight. And as we sing this song, what I want you to do, did everybody get a candle when they walked in today? Everybody got a candle? I want you to light up that candle. And what all those lights represent is the light that has dawned into the world. Through Jesus Christ. And so I encourage you guys as we sing this final song, hold that light up high and let's celebrate. Merry Christmas, guys.
Jesus, we thank you so much that on that holy night, you did come as a light into a dark, dark world. And so God, as we go out from this place today, we commit to shine a light and to be a light. And no matter how much darkness might surround us, we will not forget that the light inside of us is brighter than any darkness that could ever come around us. And so we commit to shine a light this Christmas Eve. I bless you tonight, today, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, to be salt and light, to be the light of the world. I bless you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. God bless you guys. Thanks for coming to church today. Merry, Merry Christmas. No church next weekend. The following weekend, we would love to see y'all. God bless you guys.